Okay. What is an HDR? High dynamic range. Very close. What that means is your eyes can see a gigantic range of luminosity values. The very, very dark blacks and the detail in them, the very, very bright whites and the detail in them. But your camera does not have the same dynamic range and cannot capture the same range of luminosities in one exposure. So what people will do is they will shoot three exposures and overexpose one image by like one stop here, 1.3, expose one normal, and underexpose one by minus 3.3. If you have a digital, uh, digital SLR and you bring them in with a tripod, I will absolutely show you how to set your camera on auto bracketing. And it works, <coughs> excuse me, pretty well. If nothing moves, you're good to go. If you look in this photograph here, in the first one, the, the one that is normal, not under or overexposed, you're missing the detail here and you're missing the detail here. In the one that's overexposed, this opens up. In the one that's underexposed, this is in. So when you combine all three of them, it can look pretty cool. All right. So let's continue on with this, and then we'll talk about getting an HDR look with one exposure. To shoot an HDR, you want to make sure that they're all perfectly aligned with each other by using a tripod. You also want to bracket with shutter speed and not aperture. You can use the aperture priority mode and choose maybe F8 or F11, and then when you press the shutter release halfway down, it will take a meter reading and choose the shutter speed to change. Right. So here, it is 1 4th at 1 15th. Here, it is faster, much faster, not recording as much light. And here, it's much slower, recording a lot more light. Um, you can set the camera to AEB, which will shoot three exposures at one time. Now, when you, have, when you have your images, get them into Bridge, go Tools, Photoshop, Photo Merge. <coughs> Sorry, that, not Photo Merge. Merge to HDR. There we go. Tools, Photoshop, Merge to HDR. And what that's going to do is combine all three of these images in a way that you can see a fo one photograph more clearly how, how you saw it with your eyes, right? Having the detail in the shadow and the detail in the highlights. Does that make sense? Make sense? Okay. So now it's just thinking. Seems to be pretty slow. I could, if I was a good teacher, I would edit this out. I think panoramas are fabulous. I really enjoy making them. HDRs, have we talked about at bad HDRs? No. Oh, we're going to talk about them right now then. I really would love if this window, ah, okay. The HDR settings can be very, very tricky and have the potential to look very low contrast and give you some crazy kind of effects. You can play around with some of the presets, like photorealistic. Okay. Be careful with a couple of things. The radius of the edge glow and the strength. What that can do is start to give you a halo, which is not what you want. When I do HDR, I maintain the photographic integrity, but let's let me show you what bad HDR looks like. Okay, this is bad HDR. Do you think it looks completely photoshopped? Yeah. Okay. Hey. How are you? I'm good. I just take some love. Are you recording? Right I'm now? recording. Oh. That's okay. No, I don't. I didn't stop you. <laughs> This is, this is going to be even better than the last one. I'm not editing it out. I'm not editing any of these. I don't, get, I don't get paid enough to do that. And ain't nobody got time for that. So you can see that this does not look realistic anymore. Um, the shadows, there are no shadows, first of all. 
the highlights are just blown out. And that's not really what you saw. So HDR can be used for evil. Like if this was a cloud over this landscape, it would be pitch black underneath this landscape. And you would be hiding under a rock because it'd be the end of the world. Okay? So let's keep it photographic. Another thing that can go crazy, and we're going to choose local adaptation here, is playing with the gamma, which can make it very gray or very high contrast. Hey, I don't so, like that. Yeah, I usually stick around maybe one. The exposure will make the image lighter or darker. Okay, again, I don't really mess with these things here. You can open the shadows if you'd like, open the highlights. But what I like to do, and I'll show you my method, and then I also give you notes on the other method. Basically, kind of just what to avoid. That highlight, you want to avoid getting this kind of a halo. Right? And also, you can get this very, like, stale-looking gray over it if you are not careful. The detail, if you crank up the detail in combination with the edge, not great. I'm going to show you what I do. And like I said, you absolutely should experiment. I hit default. I've recognized that there is almost no contrast, and I hit OK. What that did is combine them. So that got me one step closer. I'm going to open it in Photoshop and save it as a TIFF. I did not because nothing was moving, but I could. Oh, this one here? You could hit remove ghosts. Yeah, and then you would pick one of the uh, images, and that image would be the image that something would be stopped. I could show you, but... Things seem to be moving very slowly. I, we'll go back in and look at that. Okay. Okay. So this is what it gave us. I don't. I don't like this, frankly. I mean, it's really gray. It looks flat and artificial in through the midtones. I'm gonna file save as. And I'm going to save it as a TIFF. I'm not going to compress it. I'm going to hit OK. It is also 16 bits per channel at this point. I usually work in 8-bit, um, but that's you can totally decide what you want to do. I'm going to navigate to my desktop through Bridge. 16 bits obviously has more information. And you've got to think, do I need that information? Can I work at 8-bit? And some things in Photoshop um, have a hard time running in 16 or just won't run. If I grab this untitled HDR, see it's 102 megs, and it's a TIFF, and I'm going to bring it into Camera Raw. And then I'm going to have some fun with it. I'm going to go to Contrast first, add some contrast to it, bring down the highlights a little bit, open up the shadows a little bit, increase the clarity. And now, let's zoom in, if we look at the before, and after, let's turn off our clipping warnings. Before, very overall gray. After, a lot more zing. And it's not too far. Okay, And then I would hit OK. Hit Done. And it will appear in Bridge with this little icon that says, I was edited in Camera Raw. Okay. If you wanted to send this to print, you could always change your mind in here. Or you could save image here as a JPEG for email or as a, a copy, as, as a TIFF that was not edited in Camera Raw. Okay, so I'm going to hit Done. But if you email this to somebody and it has, see I saved it, I could email this. This has been edited in Camera Raw, the TIFF, with this icon, but this has not. So someone could open this, right? So if you send this to someone who doesn't have the software, it is not going to be able to open. Questions about that? So you went into Photoshop first, I did. merged them. I did, yeah. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this really quickly again. I don't want this video to go too long. I'm gonna go Photoshop tool. I'm in Bridge Tools, Merged HDR Pro. 
And let's see if I can get these together quicker. Okay, what Remove Ghosts does is if things are moving, and there's not too much honestly moving in here, there's a, some straight activity in the back. You can hit Remove Ghosts. What happens when you don't is you have, like, see the car ghosts? Hit Remove Ghosts, and then you can pick one of these. The car can be there. The car can be there. The car can be there. And it will choose, you choose whatever exposures you want, and it will use that when it is removing ghosts. And hit OK. All right, any questions? Again, you can play with these things in here. I tend to do most of my work on the image in camera raw because I feel like there's more control. And I don't want to get that kind of flat gamma grayness or that crazy halo around it. Why did you save it as a TIFF? I saved it as a TIFF because you cannot open a Photoshop document, a PSD in camera raw. You can only open a flat TIFF, a JPEG, or a camera raw file such as a CR2 or an NEF. 